Today is Sunday, July 2nd. And as I was combing over news, something to discuss for the channel, I came across another interesting article on Saul Canelo Alvarez, published in Boxing News 24. Link will be in the description. The article states that Canelo Alvarez screws over Benavidez, Morel, and Zhu all at the same time. This article published earlier today, July 2nd, 2023, is by Vince De Ryder. And that headline for the article alone caught my attention because I was wondering if sentiment was going to trickle into what we have been witnessing from the redhead cheater over these past few months. And I'm not disappointed. The article states, undisputed junior middleweight champion, Jermel Charlo, who's 35 and one with one draw and 19 KOs, will get the opportunity of a lifetime in September when he challenges the undisputed super middleweight champion Saul Canelo Alvarez. The 154 pound champion is daring to be great as he will go up to two weight classes to the 168 pound limit to fight for Alvarez's undisputed super middleweight crown. Initially, the opportunity was to face Canelo. Canelo was offered to the 160-pound WBC champion Jamal Charlo, but due to inactivity and personal issues, the offer was declined. Okay, let me stop right there for a moment. What about the 168-pound contenders? who have been waiting their shot while Canelo has gone to and fro, back and forth, looking to pick fruit off the vine for his salad. But he's not looking at those contenders of his weight class. He has looked beyond his weight class north and now he's looking beneath his weight class in the deep south such as Houston huh why is this and why is it being allowed to continue I spoke on this before about the fraudulent representation Canelo brings to world class championship champions and he's not representing like one the article goes on. Now, twin brother Jamel will get the opportunity he wants. But the question is, is it the opportunity that he deserves? Jamel is a tremendous boxer who is the current undisputed 154 pound champion. But is it right for him to leapfrog David Benavidez, David Morrell without competing in a single match at the 168 pound limit? It's not the fact that he's leapfrogging anyone. Canelo is reaching beyond those guys to pull Mel Charlo into his graces for a fight. Canelo Alvarez, who's 59, two losses, two draws with 39 KOs, has been taking advantage of his time as the face of boxing. That's the article's line, not mine. As he continues to be the puppet master for the past couple of years. Did you hear that, people? Alvarez has been doing what he wants to do, as opposed to giving the boxing fans the fight they want to see. After watching Canelo Alvarez defeat Caleb Plant back in November of 2021, the undefeated former two-time WBC super middleweight 
world champion David Benavidez called out the undisputed champion. Instead of stepping up to the Benavidez challenge, Alvarez had a different personal challenge in mind. Canelo Alvarez wanted to pursue a world title in the light heavyweight division, and he had the option to select the hard-hitting unified champion, Arthur Bitterbeef, or the highly skilled WBA champion, Dimitri Bivol. Alvarez chose Dimitri Bivol, and he got dominated over the course of 12 rounds. Yes, that's because sometimes when you try to sneak and sneak and sneak, you get caught with your hand in the cookie jar. And Dimitri Bivol slammed the lid shut on Canelo's hand. He even had recent surgery, you let him tell it. After his failed attempt at the light heavyweight title, Canelo would go back down to 168 to give the fans a fight that no one asked to see. Instead of fighting David Benavidez, the face of boxing fought a declining 40 million year old Gennady Triple G Golovkin. The trilogy bout was a complete 12 round snooze fest as it lacked both action and drama. The best action of that particular night occurred when Alvarez became frustrated at the post-fight press conference as a member of the media asked if he saying he would not fight a Mexican boxer was his way of ducking David Benavidez. Guys, I always say this. You show that video and put whatever you want. I say I don't want to fight Mexicans is because I represent Mexico. And that's why. But I don't care. I fight anybody. In my entire life, anybody, Canelo stated. Alvarez continued by saying, Whether you think that I don't want to fight with one Mexican Benavidez, but look, I hear his dad talking a lot of shit. But look, he's accomplished nothing. One single champion, Anthony Durrell. Please, don't make me disrespect myself. Please, guys. Yes, my, that's my poor Canelo accent. But the true accent is on what was asked by a media personality and how the response came through from Canelo. Further deny that he had no interest in facing Alvarez and only he represents Mexico. And I have to say that if only he represents Mexico, that's a poor representation or a representative. So we need a new one, huh? And by fighting David Benavidez, maybe we would get that. But Canelo, who's selfish, does not believe in team, does not want to pass the baton continues to sit and mope and look for other ways to draw other people into his circle and circus of madness. On that night, Alvarez requested that the media not make him disrespect himself, but in May 2023, he decided to disrespect the boxing public by fighting British super middleweight John Ryder. Eight months prior, Alvarez said former two-time WBC world champion David Benavidez, whose record is 27-0 with 23 KOs, has done nothing to deserve a title shot. But then after making that statement, he fights John Ryder, a man who came into the bout with five losses. And his signature win was a controversial split decision hometown victory over Danny Jacobs, who went to the UK to fight Ryder. After the John Ryder fight, Canelo was trying to negotiate a rematch with Dimitri Bivol, despite getting dominated by Bivol in the previous bout. The face of boxing had the audacity to request that Bivol should defend his title for a second time. 
Bivol and his team were adamant in regards to a potential rematch taking place at 168 for Canelo's undisputed crown. You see, the stakes have to be where something is at risk. And why does everyone else have to risk body, limb, purse for Canelo? But everything, according to he, is locked safe away. Sounds unfair to me. Once Bivol's team stuck to that demand, Alvarez moved on to the Charlo twins. This article is actually forgetting that Canelo actually tried to move on to Baru Jack, who said that Canelo wanted to drain him down 20 pounds from cruiserweight and have a rehydration clause in a potential match in their negotiation. And Baru Jack took to Twitter to put the information out there that he respectfully declined and suggested that Canelo go fight David Benavidez in a fight that the people want to see. So, of course, you knew the redhead cheetah decided to hell with Badu Jack, huh? So he looked out and he moved on to the Charlo twins. In the process of making this move and screwing over interim WBC middleweight titleist, super middleweight titleist, David Benavidez, and WBA regular super middleweight titleist, David Morrell, Canelo's decision has also affected the top challenger at 154. Tim Zhu, whose record is 23 and old with 17 KOs, fresh off of a victory over Carlos Ocampo and prior to that, Tony Harrison. He was set to challenge Charlo for the undisputed middleweight, junior middleweight title in January of this year, but Charlo suffered a hand injury in training camp and the fight was postponed. It's hard to blame Charlo for accepting the opportunity, but it's easy to blame Canelo Alvarez for ducking Benavidez and ducking David Morrell and inadvertently screwing Tim Zhu and holding up not one but two divisions. You see, fraudulent representation in boxing. My video is now two and a half weeks old and here we are today receiving this type of article on Canelo Alvarez. It seems like Canelo is willing to fight anybody but the top two contenders in his own weight class. And if you add Christian Mabili, that's three top fighters. If you add Demetrius Andre, who has vacated his middleweight title to move up to super middleweight, that's four. And Demetrius Andre was called at a post-fight press conference by Canelo a horrible fighter. But what was Triple G. What was John Ryder? What was Advil Nildrum? What were any of these guys whom he's decided to fight over his last six bouts? Jamal will probably be next to avenge his brother's loss. And if Canelo loses to Jamel, then Benavidez, Morel, and Zhu will continue to experience delays in their undisputed quest due to the fact Canelo will definitely activate his rematch clause. You see, you can't make this stuff up, people. But it's on and on again. The same story with Canelo Alvarez and his foolishness. But when will the public turn their sentiment against him because it's obvious now that he has done too much and he continues to do too much he needs to be put in check let's hope Jamel Charlo is up to the task but what do you think this is Stormy B man shout out to the mighty LDBC and liberated perspective a third eye view of the world. 
For more content such as this, please like, comment, subscribe, and share. Let me know what you think about Canelo Alvarez and how he's affecting the sport of boxing. No longer, as I said before, the face, but now the ass of boxing. Peace to everyone out there and everyone please remain safe.